Hey guys, this is Ron. Uh, this is Lab 17, and I'll be covering access lists. So access lists are a way for you to uh, basically filter the traffic that comes through your router. Uh, as it hits an interface, you can make the decision uh, whether uh, that traffic is permitted or denied. Okay, and you're you're basically building a list of permit statements and deny statements. Uh, and so what's going to happen is your router is going to take that traffic and match it against the access list. It's going to go in sequential order, line by line. And if it matches one of those lines, it's going to do whatever that line says to do, either permit or deny. If it doesn't end up matching any of those lines, at the end of the access list, there's an explicit deny, uh, meaning that it didn't match something, so I'm not allowing the traffic through. Okay. Now, as you build your access list, every line that you enter gets added to the bottom of the list so the order that you enter uh, these basically lines is important because again it's going to go in sequential order and you can't uh, determine that okay this line I want it to go second this line I want it to go first not unless you enter it that way so if you need to make a change to an access list you go ahead and you remove the entire access list make your changes in notepad and then paste it back in okay so a an access list can be applied inbound on an interface or it can be applied outbound on an interface okay and the the saying is that it can be you know only one access list can be applied per direction per interface uh, so I can add an access list inbound, I can add another access list outbound, but I can only do one, basically. Only one inbound and one outbound, but you're, you're allowed to enter uh, them basically both then on an interface. I know I, I explained that pretty confusing like, but if you take it, one access list per direction per interface, okay? So I can have access list 10 inbound on this interface I can have access list 20 outbound on this interface but I can't have both 10 and 20 inbound on an interface okay so I have standard access lists I have extended access lists and I have named access list and we'll we'll go through each one um, basically you're gonna take the tasks that you want to do and I've come up with three uh, and you're gonna determine the best way to do it and you know the best way to do it whether you permit just this type of traffic and deny everything else or you deny a couple things and then whatever's left over you're gonna do a permit any any it's really up to you how you want to build it you're gonna to try to be efficient with it uh, but you're also going to look at where's the best place to apply it because in the case of let's say a standard access list a standard access list can only match on source addresses which means uh, putting it right in front of the source is a bad idea so if I'm trying to let's say deny uh, VLAN 30 from accessing the server out here uh, and I'm gonna use a standard access list I don't want to apply that on the interface that this thing basically comes in on because then I'm gonna apply ev or I'm gonna block everything that VLAN 30 tries to do but if I apply it uh, basically outbound on this interface I'm only going to be blocking what VLAN 30 wants to do in this direction they can still function here and they can still function here okay so I have to be careful if I'm going to use a standard access list you know I can only match on source so I want to put it towards as close to the destination as possible okay so let's try that let's let's build a standard access list and what we're going to do is only allow VLAN 10 to Telnet into the routers. Okay, so we're going to allow this guy Telnet access to our router here, router 1 and router 2. Okay, so let's get in it. Come up, bring up command line. We'll do a config T. Now, a standard access list is a numbered access list, and it can have a number anywhere from 1 to 99 or 1300 to 1999 now in packet tracer doesn't allow us that whole range but we'll get most of it so we'll do a access list if I do a question mark shows me that my standard access lists are from 1 to 99 so I'll just do access list 10 
do a question mark. We have permit or we have deny, permit, and remark. So I'm going to do remark first because I think they're important. Uh, when you're doing numbered access lists like this, uh, it's it's ultra important that you add a remark because uh, a couple months down the road, you're going to forget why you created uh, access list 10. You'll be looking at it and you're like, okay, I know it it matches VLAN 10, but why did it? Why did I, you know, build it? And then you're going to have to go through your entire config to see well, where did I apply VLAN or access list 10. Well, if you add a remark, it's that much easier. We're just going to allow VLAN 10 Telnet access. All right. So we'll go back into access list 10. This time we'll do a permit. Now I can do an any, which means I'm going to allow any source address, or I'm going to put a specific, uh, or a, not a specific, but a network address here. Or if I put host, I could say, you know, a very specific computer. Okay. In this case, I'm going to do it for the whole network. So I'm just going to do 192.168.10.0, because we're talking about VLAN 10 here. Now VLAN 10 is a slash 25, which is a 255.255.255.128. So if I do a question mark, it's going to ask for wildcard bits. Now if you haven't watched my wildcard masks video, uh, now would be a good time. But basically we're going to do uh, a wildcard, which is 0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. Uh, since we have a block size of 128, this becomes 127. All right. And then carriage return. All right. So if we do a show run, uh, we'll do a do show. I, I think it's just access lists. Access list. All right. So we have a standard IP access list 10, and it's a permit 192.168.10.0.000.127. If we do do show run, what we'll see here at the bottom is we have access list 10, remark, access list 10, permit, and then there's always the implicit deny of access list 10, deny any any. Okay, so it's going to deny then any source address. Okay, so now we need to apply uh, access list 10 uh, to our telnet ports. So we'll do line VTY 015. Now there's a access class and you'll see access group in your other interfaces, but in Telnet or in your VTY ports, it's access class. So access class. Now we have to put the uh, number, so 10, and we're going to do it inbound and enter. All right. So let's see if it works. So if I come to VLAN 20, let's see if he can uh, Telnet into the router. So we'll ping 192.168.0.1. So this is uh, router 1. So now let's try to telnet 192.168.0.1. Connection refused by remote host. Okay. Now if I take VLAN 1 and I do a telnet 192.168.0.1 it allows me access Cisco Cisco if I could yeah there we go so log out so we basically uh, blocked traffic outside of VLAN 1 so let's say these were our our help desk guys or what have it or our network engineers they now have telnet access to this router whereas nobody else does Okay, and then we could we could build the same access list uh, then on router two, you know, add uh, another access list ten. Make sure we put the remark on it, and then apply it to the VTY ports there, and we would have the same thing. VLAN ten can access nobody else. Okay, so that's standard access list, and task one is now complete.